Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Simon Says. Today I'm reviewing the Carrera racing truck, truck number six. Um, it's got this wonderful metallic blue colour paint on it, um, chromed out gas tanks um, and you know lovely wheels. They're also chromed out with the red spokes there on this particular one. Um, like the other Carrera cars, the printing on the graphics is very, very good down to a very high level of detail. Um, this car is lacking in the sponsorship that the um, regular race cars have. This is because this is a, a series of vehicles that Carrera have made on their own. And these are all kind of fantasy trucks and fantasy liveries. So, let's see how it compares to the BMW. But um, quality and finish wise, it's just like the other Carrera cars. Um, high quality, just not a huge amount to talk about on this one because it is a reasonably plain design. So, let's have a look. So, this is a truck and it's very different in terms of how it's put together. So back to my base car, the BMW M4. If I compare the front wheel positioning to the driven wheels and the driven wheels on this truck, the back here, it's still a two wheel drive truck. These are floating and free. These are driven. So if I do line up the front wheels, you can see the wheelbase on the BMW is a little bit longer, but not by much. But look at the difference in the guide position the guide on the bmw is much further forward so there's much more car on the bmw turning wise and putting more turning force into it versus the truck if we line up guide to guide here the turning base i guess would be a term for it um, on the bmw is far longer and uh, yeah, this results in the BMW being more prone to being tail happy. The truck actually isn't that tail happy. Not sure whether or not it's because of the extra floating wheels, but um, yeah, it's not that tail happy, although it does get this tail out. So let me pause it right here. Let me pull the lids off and show you inside the truck in comparison to the BMW. Okay, so I've got the the screws out the truck and as well as doing that um, I've got the BMW screw here in my left hand and the truck here on the right the truck screw is actually maybe one or two millimeters longer so you know if you lose the screw on the truck you're gonna need a slightly longer screw you're not gonna be able to steal it from another car so here is the truck and let me see if I can wiggle this off. Now this truck is in several bits. The um, the tail of the truck, the bed of the truck, I guess, slots in there just behind the cab. And the truck is fixed together in a few points and the fuel tanks is where it's screwed into on either side. So just a subtle difference there. Um, it's pretty much two-piece body didn't expect that but there we go in fact the whole wing unit also just slides off so if you wanted to take the wing off it and run it without the wing you could do um, yeah just some subtle differences there okay so that's the shell what are we looking at chassis wise so the first thing, the biggest difference, is the um, self-centering mechanism. With the BMW, you see it's up on top of the chassis. But with the truck, it's sort of integrated with the chassis, with some of it being ab above and below the normal deck. So it's a different, I guess, guide layout with everything connecting on the back of the guide here rather than the BMW up on the front of the guide so 
completely different it looks like in the guide design which is kind of cool and if you see right there you can see the silver that's the spring clip and that's how the centering guide works on the truck so other differences so the truck the center wheel you can see is on this floating carriage and this floating carriage has the rear axle go through it so this means when you trim the tires down and round them off the wheels are always going to be floating and they'll float a good way so you don't have to worry about trimming the drive wheels down because these um, middle wheels will always stay out of the way for you so there's a good amount of movement there they'll just apply very light pressure to the track and really won't affect much um, these are the drive wheels on the back of the motor just like a standard car and so yeah it's kind of an interesting design there we go and we've still got the magnets one in the middle and one underneath but this one might be tricky to get at if you were wanting to take it out um, yeah Ooh, let me see oh look the whole thing pops out so that's easy enough so that's what it looks like comes out as a floating carriage there and then you can easily get them at the rear magnet so speaking of magnets let me get this car put back together and get it on the uh, downforce measurement tool i'll be right back okay i'm over here at the magnet tool but one question that i've seen come up a little bit on the uh, facebook recently is you know how tall is the truck and it is a reasonable amount taller than the bmw the BMW, I would say, if you want clearance for an overpass, you're going to be looking at eh, probably somewhere around two inches minimum clearance. For the truck, that is about two and a half inches at the wing and right around the same at the cab for this particular truck so you're kind of looking at a minimum of three inches just to be safe of clearance when you're building your overpasses and you want to take the truck into consideration you could go at two and three quarter inches and that would be sort of okay but that would be kind of like the minimum height i would say you want to build your overpasses at if you're building a, a circuit now and you've just got cars but you might want to go to trucks later all right let's calibrate this thing to the bmw uh, 118 grams is the bmw weight so i'll get the scale calibrated and then we'll see what the truck is okay so i've got the scale calibrated to the bmw at about 118 grams which is where it has been and now i'll switch it out with the truck and see what the truck has very very gently and put the truck in the middle so this truck actually is pretty light on the magnet let's just switch out again Hundred and fifteen, hundred and sixteen, seventeen. And switch out and just make sure. Seventy grams. So this truck is uh, pretty light on the magnet, and maybe that's uh, wheel size or distance from the magnet to the steel block. But there we go. So this truck is a little lighter on the magnets than the BMW. Let's uh, get some laps in. Okay, so I've got the Carrera race truck on the track and I'm going to put in some laps and then afterwards I'll bring it back to the table and give you some uh, driving impressions and some final thoughts. So wish me luck in keeping it on the track today.
should check my speed. All right, we're set to full speed. Land it back in the slot. All right, one more lap because I know I'm uh, testing my luck here. Last lap. All right, there we go. I'll bring it back to the table. Okay, so not too much of a surprise there. <laughs> the uh, the truck is the slowest of the vehicles uh, I have reviewed. However, it's a fun little driving truck um, with the magnets in and stock. How it behaves is different to the other cars. So it is a different driving experience. So with it as stock, this car is going to do one of two things. In a sharp corner, it's either going to get up on its side, ride one set of wheels, and hopefully drop back down in the slot. More often than not, it will go up on its uh, three wheels and fall down, and you've gone past enough of the corner where it just lands on the track. So it's either going to come out that way when you're driving it hot, or it's going to tip on over and just fall out the track. And so, you know, it's a different driving experience. So, should you get one? If you're driving on your own most of the time and you just want a different car to drive, this does provide a very different driving experience. However, if you're racing against buddies, then maybe this ought to be a class thing because anything else, modern GT or group five cars um, you know if you're running under the same rules they're, they're going to go past this thing this thing isn't going to be competitive against cars however I think it could be an awful lot of fun if you had more than one and you were racing in a class of trucks that would be fun um, Maybe if you experimented taking the magnets out, it would be quite tail happy. Because you can see the shape of the car. There's a lot of weight in the front and not so much weight on the back. So this would probably make for a pretty tail happy, fun class to drive. And it's a very different experience to the Group Bs and the um, current GT cars. So there we go. So it's a fun vehicle to drive. Different driving experience and... Maybe you should get one. But if you're racing with friends, maybe you should get more than one or encourage them to get their own as well. So there you go. That's it um, for the truck. It's a fun car. I like it. Um, gives me something different to drive. And yeah, there we go. Until the next time, everybody, you take care. And um, I'll see you all soon. Bye.